What I wanted to do here was create a little photographic pinhole system for making tiny little square positive prints. And I wanted the camera to be small and simple, elegantly simple. And I purposefully designed this system to use the Harman Direct Positive Paper because my my ultimate goal in this is to have these these tiny little inch and three quarter or so square images that are kind of exquisitely small. They're big enough to hold them in the palm of your hand and look at them easily. And they're small enough such that they appear to be quite sharp. They're, they're right about that scale, a personal scale uh, of, of in your hand kind of an image. I was inspired to think about using all these little film canisters that I have laying around the house over all these years I've collected. And as it turns out, I have found nine of them that would work for me. And so it just happens to be that this, these nine cameras, I built a little custom tray kind of a box to carry them in, in a three by three arrangement. And it sort of naturally fit that they would work as a three by three grid of images or a set of images, if you will. So it's interesting how with pinhole photography, one's decision of how to design the camera or multiple cameras to work with the size of film format that you want. It's interesting how all that relates to the final image and even the presentation of the images ultimately. It's really a fascinating process how the camera design interacts with the photographer to uh, affect the final image. And that's one of the enjoyment, uh, enjoyments of pinhole photography is this interaction between the physical part of camera making and the image itself. So when I was thinking about making this pinhole camera project involving my film canisters that I have, a whole bunch of them laying around the house, I had to go around looking at the film canisters. When I got all the film canisters together, I had to organize them, and I found that there was three different kinds of canisters. So the first kind was these translucent white ones, which obviously aren't light tight, and they wouldn't work for cameras. Uh, the second kind were a black canister that has the gray cap. And at first it looked promising, like it could be light type, but then I discovered by shining a bright light through it that the cap is not, translu is not opaque, it's translucent. So you could imagine you might be able to make it do by, you know, either painting the cap black or putting tape on it, uh, which might work. But um, I had enough of the third kind, which are the black canisters with the black caps. And those were the kinds I ended up using. So I had enough of these. Uh, I actually found 12 of them, but three of them are, the lids are slightly loose. And so those three I didn't use, so I ended up with nine of them that are usable. For making the, the basic hole in our canister, what you want to do is, I take a piece of painter's masking tape about an inch to inch and a half long, and I'm going to put it along the side of the um, canister. Then when I had measured the canisters earlier to figure out my film format, the film format is an inch and three quarters. And so from the bottom of the canister, I'm going to measure up half that, which is seven eighths of an inch. And that's going to put my, the hole or the pinhole is going to be in the roughly the center vertical wise of the film or the paper. So I start with a small pilot hole drill, drilled with a 1 16th inch drill bit. And then I follow that up with a quarter inch Forstner bit. And a Forstner bit is one of these special bits that has a center spike and then the blades around the edge. These quarter inch Forstner bits are a little bit harder to find. But uh, anyways, I drill a quarter inch hole. And when you're done with that, you'll have a hole like this. But because the canister is soft polyethylene plastic, you're going to have some little burrs and little pieces of uh, plastic sticking out of the edge. So I take a regular helical quarter inch bit and by hand, I kind of go around and I wall out the edges and I clean up the edges of the canister so that they are nice and clean. You don't have any of those uh, little feathers of plastic sticking out to possibly obstruct the pinhole. So now I'm, I've already made my 
a pinhole into my piece of brass. It's a three quarter inch square of brass. The brass is curved, it has a curve to it, and the pinhole is you know, the front of the pinhole is on the convex side of the curve, and you notice, of course, the film canister being curved. Those two curves match each other, if you will. So what I want to do is mount the pinhole inside the canister centered on this hole that we drilled. What I use is I use this uh, black cloth adhesive tape called gaffer's tape. And I'm going to take about an inch and a half, maybe an inch and a quarter long piece of this tape. And I'm going to cut a hole in the middle of the tape. And what I do is I fold it in half with the adhesive side to the outside. And I snip a little angle at 45 degrees and another one at 45 degrees to that. And that makes a little square hole in the tape. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a square hole in that tape. So what I do is with the concave side up is what I want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully move this hole in the tape directly down over the pinhole to keep the pinhole centered. And I'm going to stick the piece of brass to the back of the tape. And now my pinhole is nicely centered right in that little diamond shaped hole in the tape. So my tape is nice and uniform around the hole. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold this tape on my finger, adhesive side up. I'm going to take my canister and I can see my pinhole right in the middle of that piece of brass. And I'm going to very carefully put the pinhole and the tape inside there. And I'm going to visually try to keep the pinhole lined up in the center of the hole that we drilled in the canister. As I slowly raise the pinhole up toward the, the sidewall of the canister, I want to keep that hole centered. I make a last minute correction to it. And now I can just push down, press down the tape all around the inside of that. And once um, the tape is firmly in place and the pinhole is nicely centered in the hole of the canister, I basically have a finished camera. The only thing I need is a shutter for the camera. Now, you can get fancy with mechanical shutters or whatever, and there's different ways of doing fancier shutters on these canister cameras. But I found the best thing to do for a shutter, the simplest elegant solution is to take some black electrical tape and take about an inch and a half or so, fold over about a quarter inch of it for a handle, cover the pinhole, and there is your shutter. And uh, that is a completed camera right there. So it's going to take more than just uh, a simple one camera to have a working pinhole camera system with multiple canisters. So what I have here, this is a box I, I made. It's actually made out of the thin cardboard covered in vinyl adhesive shelf liner and taped together with black gaffer's tape. Um, I have nine pinhole cameras in here. So let's just show you how, let's take number nine for instance. What, how I modified it further from what you saw is I have a piece of that adhesive flexible rubber sheet magnet on the cap. On the bottom of the camera, I have a label laser printed, covered in clear plastic tape that has the, the number of the camera. And I normally store these cameras capside down in the box. And when I start shooting with number nine, and when I'm done shooting number nine, I flip it around. So now the highest number showing is eight, which means I have eight shots left, and you work yourself down to one. How do you mount one of these pinhole cameras on a tripod to keep it secure? Well, I had uh, because I'm using these sheet magnets, I needed a piece of metal. I had an old electrical plate in my junk drawer, and that's how you do it. This, there's a piece of plywood underneath that the electrical plate is screwed to. The piece of plywood has a quarter 20 blind nut for mounting on a tripod. But basically, this is going to be the tripod head, and I can actually stick multiple cameras on the platform if I want to. And I simply uh, peel off the tape. Let, do the exposure, put the tape back on, and stick it back in the box. And that is my completed nine camera film canister pinhole camera kit. Over the last few years, I have not uh, been involved in pinhole photography nearly to the extent that I used to be. And I would like to see some project 
um, come out of all this a, a real project of not not a project in the sense of building a camera kind of a project but I mean a photographic project a documentary project of some kind specifically employing pinhole cameras I've never really done that I've done a few small things but I think a long-term project with pinhole photography would be a, a great way to use my experience and my skill that I've built up over the years in this medium but um, I don't really know. I'm not really there yet. I don't know what that's going to lead to. I'm still, I just got to be open to the possibility that there's going to be this project that I'm going to fall, fall into and it will all of a sudden be taking use of all the years of experience I've built up. And I have to just keep trusting that that's going to happen. And one of the ways I have to kind of help enable it to happen is I have to continue working in the medium of pinhole photography, which that has been my biggest problem is I haven't been and so I'm kind of trying to reverse that trend and I'm hoping to be able to to uh, do more pinhole photography here just to keep my skills up and to help uh, um, be available when the time comes when that opportunity presents itself.